So now that I've kind of figured out the first part, um, this is really a pretty time consuming situation here. Um, I have to kind of figure out now what this is going to be like when I actually wrap this foam and, and how it's going to work and, and how it's going to go together and, and how much of the sheet is going to be used. Um, this took a, a real long time to kind of figure out just because it's so cumbersome to try to lay it out. As you can see, I'm trying to roll it. I'm trying to get a good gauge as to how much overlap there's going to be. Um, which came out to about right it's a 20 inch wide roll a 20 inch wide sheet and 17 and a quarter inches is the circumference of the circle so you can see that there is a overlap or there will be available overlap of a little less than three inches um, so the other thing that I thought would be important is you certainly wouldn't want this giant vertical seam on the paper uh, as it's going as a foam so I thought about that but then I thought okay I really need to figure out these I need to figure out the levels and then I need to figure out at what point I'm going to be cutting the tube and so I see okay this spiral here how big is the spiral and I thought maybe I could use that as a gauge and say okay this is 12 inches this ruler is 12 inches so that's kind of almost a full thing and there's me struggling to try to get a straight line on it somehow um, and see if that would help me uh, with the segmenting of the of the tube and so then I thought okay well what if I did these levels this way and now I'm thinking to myself this is way more complicated than I thought it was going to be in, in sorting out where these doors were going to be and where the cuts were going to be and and how this whole thing was going to happen and you know it's starting to kind of fall apart on me visually because at this point I didn't really understand how I was going to make this work. Um, so I thought, okay, well maybe maybe I don't need to really worry about this right at the moment because I just need to figure out the stairs and I need to get that going rather than than being paralyzed, you know, paralysis by analysis and, and just trying to analyze every little nuance of this tube now when I don't really even have all the raw materials put together. And sometimes that can happen. You can really be dragged down in the minutia of the details of every little part of it before you even start doing the physical work. And that, that'll put you so far behind where you think you should be. Um, so I said, all right, forget that. I don't need to worry about that right now. I'm just going to do the steps. So... I knew the thickness of the foam. I was allowing for the thickness of the foam. I'm making an extra space there and saying, okay, it's definitely going to be wider, same shape, uh, but it's really needing to be on these slightly different arcs um, to get a true template for what the actual step is going to be. And so I said, okay, I know I need to, it needs to be out a little further. And then there's going to be an overlap. So here's going to be the second step. And it's going to kind of overlap a little bit that way. And so there's going to be enough space for overlap. There's me writing the word overlap. I'm not sure why I was doing that. But I guess it's just reminding me what those lines are. And I'm labeling everything so that I can take a picture of it, number one, and uh, immortalize those dimensions so that they're recoverable later. Um, and then maybe, you know, generate some PDF template to make it possible for others to kind of emulate or at least have a starting point for where I started because obviously everything in life is, is R&D, which is rob and duplicate. So, you know, my hope is, is that where I take it now from where it was two or three steps beyond where it was originally, someone will come up with another idea or a different idea to take it even further than I had it. So uh, that's the hope because, you know, nothing's really static and, and, and nothing's really, really ever truly proprietary because everybody's ideas are really coming off the inspiration of another person, um, which is what I have always wanted um, in, in all the things that I do, um, whether it be photography, whether it be business, whether it be personal, you, you know, you, you have to allow yourself the possibility that you will inspire another person to do something similar to what you do. Um, 
and, and not be so concerned or afraid of what's going to happen when, when someone emulates um, your idea. So now I'm just, I'm trying to make a template. I, I, I know that I need to replicate these pieces and they're not one-offs. So I really need to have, what I think I should do is make a template that I can then apply to the foam board so that I can create a reproducible shape um, in mass and then cut it out in quantity and kind of you know create an assembly line for that raw material production. So this is the first part of, of kind of getting to that point of having a working template. And, 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 I, and I am of the mind that you should always, in your brain, be saying to yourself, I'm not designing a piece, I'm designing a system to make a piece. Uh, because you may want to do this a different way, a second or third time. Or you may want to expand your starter kit of this particular project. And being able to immediately pull back out the templates, and you'll see them here in a minute, um, and immediately go back and just replicate another entire sheet of steps or an entire sheet of platforms or whatever um, makes it very easy to then, then go further than where you started. Um, rather than having to try to guess what size things are supposed to be or anything like that. So I always recommend building templates for what you've done, even if nothing else, just for yourself. Um, and for, you know, for the benefit of those who may want to learn from what you did. Um, so again, this is just a, a general tried and true way of tracing an object into a regular piece of paper. If I had tracing paper, it certainly would be easier. Um, if I had a French curve, it certainly would be easier. Um, or a compass, that would be something I probably should get next. Um, or some kind of radius gauge, which I, I don't have. So I definitely have the radius of the tube. Um, and then I kind of have to fudge the rest. But again, it's, it's, you're not making machined parts from a machine. Uh, you're not making precise, precisely uh, uh, machine tooled objects. Uh, you're making something that's essentially the product of stone cutting um, as price, precise as it could possibly be um, in the circa of the environment in which this is uh, existing. So, you know, this is me measuring and making sure that all my measurements are right, making sure everything's right, kind of, you know, documenting as I go um, because it's always easier to know that you're on the right track when you start actually cutting up your material that you paid for, when you've kind of gone over these dimensions and really just take time here. Um, again, as I said before, taking time in the preparation makes the construction go much faster than if you didn't. Because what hap ends up happening is the, is the concept of introduced errors, where you have a, a, a minor error somewhere and you're replicating that error over multiple pieces and tens of tens of pieces. And by the time you realize that you have an introduced error, the, the cumulative problem uh, gets exponentially worse as you, as you progress. So being able to catch that early uh, is really important and being able to try to eliminate is important. Now, in figuring out how to do this platform, uh, clearly it needed to kind of have some symmetry to it. So the easiest way to do this is to draw half of it and then fold the paper. And then through tracing, you get back to the original side and it's going to be identical because you're using it the existing side. So no matter what shape you use, that is not nearly as critical as getting it somewhat symmetrical and not lopsided because uh, that'll obviously look more distracting visually. So here I am trying to at least get the center line of that shape as best I can. Because again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and so I'm saying, all right, let's see if I can get this here and I can get that center line. And that way I can get the starting point and you know, pull another line. And now get the circle back in there to get that radius as right as I could get it. Because again, it doesn't, it's foam. You're going to be trimming it. You're going to have introduced errors of, of angles and curves and mat mating up with the curve that it's being glued to and it may or may not work. So I, you just get as best you can. Um, 
but don't be afraid to draw that line and draw that hard line and say, okay, this is the line. I've committed to this line. Now, in retrospect, I made the end of it a little short there. Right there, that part, I think I made a little short because it doesn't made up exactly well with the other tiles. But I didn't catch it because um, I don't think I made that measurement and I just was a little fast. Now I'm looking at it and saying, okay, does this look right? Is that the right it's supposed to look? Um, so again, it's close. And I said, okay, I, th I think I may not have gotten this right. I didn't see. So that's, again, you see how you, 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 you if something doesn't look right. It probably isn't. Um, and so I have to make an adjustment on that to make sure it's wide enough to cover underneath the next tile. And so I'm, then I'm double checking the measurements here. Sorry for the camera breathing in and out is fo focus. It just, sometimes it loses focus as close. So then I'm also getting myself some actual linear measurements to make sure that I have that right. So now here's the part where you, you, you kind of do some old school kind of stuff. And so you say to yourself, all right, I'll just fold this sucker over. And then, all right, so that I can kind of see it. So then I trace it through to the back side of the paper. And this is just old school drafting tricks. Um, you just trace it kind of hard, you know, any kind of pencil will do. I just have a regular mechanical pencil. So now I can see it because now it then sticks through the back of the paper to come to the front and it should be pretty darn close to what the original design was. Um, and then you just go back in and just trace over it um, to get yourself the completed portion of that, uh, of that shape. Um, not sure what's happening here at this particular part of the video. I'm certainly doing something off camera and I have no idea what it might be. I might have had to go and get something. Oh, I know what I did. I think I had to go and get what I was going to use for the template, which you'll see here in a second. So now I'm making my line as permanent as I can make it and as sharp as I can make it and just commit to a shape and just make that commitment. Um, and know that I that that's what it's going to be and and again you just have to just once you press forward it, it's a one it's a tremendous feeling it's like going down a, a it's like going down a, a hiking path and saying okay where where am I where do I want to go and you have to decide you have to make a decision somewhere you decide and then you start walking um, and it's always exciting to see where that adventure takes us. So I, I think I grabbed a green piece of paper and I thought that was going to work and, and I couldn't do that. So then I said, all right, so the next best thing to do is to cut the shape, fold it in half, cut the shape out. And now I have a, a, a positive and a negative template, even though it's in flimsy paper, I at least have a positive and a negative that I can find some way of transferring to a, a, a better a better material. So then again, there's the negative, pretty symmetrical. There's the positive, pretty symmetrical. So I have a choice of using either one of these different um, options. And of course I have the other, now, now I'm checking to make now, you, I'm going through the templates and saying, okay, does this look right? Does this look like I've made it wide enough? And I'm like, okay, well maybe this is a little too wide. I well, where did I, where did I make an error here? And I say, okay, well maybe that's not so bad. Um, cause again, it's a platform. You're not going to have more than one of them side by side. So it's not too bad. Um, and you just, you just double checking again, you just go through, you look at it cause this is the time where the, the corrections and changes aren't, there's zero cost here except for some extra time. When you start putting it in the foam and you realize you made a mistake and you have to throw away pieces or try to modify a piece. And now you've, your template is no longer what you're actually making. Yeah, it's just sickening to the stomach to have that happen because you, you just never want to have to retool a piece or a master. You always want the master to be right. And then once you have the master, the rest of it afterwards, the construction after it is just, it's a breeze because you're really not even at that point being creative in your cuts and your, your execution of the process. You're just, now you're in a factory mode. All right, I need to make 600 steps. I have my template, I throw the template down, boom, 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 boom. So this is me cutting out the uh, standard, I don't know if it's anything is really standard in this project, but me cutting out the step that is the regular step. It was a little off camera there. Um, 
and again, making a positive and a negative. And I made a little adjustment to the shape um, to kind of change that out to just to make sure it was going to work. And so I'm like, okay, this is, that looks right. Okay, so that lines up pretty well. Here's the next one. There's the overlap. That lines up pretty well. Um, and then here's the, here's the platform with the next one. If I'm going up from the platform or down from the platform, it, it, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, it's not... It, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's a design. You could certainly come up with a better way of doing it. I wanted a bigger space where the door was, so it was pretty obvious where the door was, and there was more room for multiple, like maybe two people side by side in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, in the platform section. So I wanted something fairly consistent that wasn't going to bend or break, so I decided to cut the, 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 the storage flap off of the inside of each of these of this plastic folder, as you can see, found material. Um, this is a pretty heavy duty material as far as plastic goes, but still easily cuttable. It's got a texture to it, um, so it doesn't really slide around. And so I cut those two wings off of that folder. And now I'm on to taking my paper templates and turning them into something actually usable to transfer these shapes to foam or cardboard or whatever else you're going to be transferring to because now I once I have the permanent template that's a, you know that's you that's an you create what at that point you're creating an inventory for yourself I now have a template inventory that I have in a box that if I need to get steps whether it's on the side of a building or whether it's um, a stone uh, escarpments into the side of a hill for hill terrain and, you know, when you put stone slabs into the ground on a hilly surface, you could use the same shape and it would allow you to be able to replicate that pretty quickly because you've already done all this work. Um, in woodworking, this would be like making a jig, which is essentially a tool to help you build a piece and replicate that piece multiplied by however many times you need it consistently and identical to each other. So this is essentially what this would be is a foam cutting jig. Um, which is essentially just a, a, a negative relief cutout. So I'm looking for a way here now to take the existing one template and turn it into a row of these uh, of, of these tiles. So what I do is I made a I made a reference point there by putting a whole, putting a, putting a pin in there and say okay this is the highest point on that curve. And then there's another high point on the curve there. So let me put another one on this side. I think I can put another one on this side. And so it's real close. Of course, I didn't really plan this out. Again, first time, <laughs> very little pre-planning before you start drawing on a piece of paper or else I probably would have done it a whole different way. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I can do this undulating curve of tiles in a strip without having an introduced error of angle so that it starts going off the foam so that I have the ability to put it up against the furthest edge, which is that black line that I drew, and make sure that it stays consistent. So now what I'm doing is I'm drawing in that single tile, and I'm kind of doing that. Now what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over, and I'm now figuring out a way to be able to get that tile onto another part of the sheet, and be able to cut out multiples of this tile on one piece of plastic. Now it looks like it's going off the edge and I'm not sure, I don't remember how I resolved that, um, but it looks like it's going off the edge. Um, and so that just, it, that's where it is. And then on this side, I think I was able to get a full tile on the thing. And I'm leaving a space in between the shapes so that when I go to draw this, um, I think I left a space or I left a, a, a tiny space so that I, I could draw, if I boogered up one cut in between, it wouldn't be two tiles screwed up. It would just be one um, if I had to change a blade or something like that. So again, I'm just transferring the shape in kind of a stripe, a wiggly stripe with pencil. I said, okay, well, this is going to work. So I just need to figure out a way to cut this into a template so that I can then use this as a negative to then trace the shape into the foam. So now I have a piece of cardboard, and then I have my foam underneath, which, or my drawing board underneath, and then there's a, I'm using just a plastic fold-out table. So I'm using a sharp knife uh, with a high point 
uh, to go in and, and cut out the negative relief on these guys. And it wasn't really, it was really easy. Actually, it was, it was, it was exceptionally easy to do this. Um, and, you know, now you have now created a permanent way of being able to get this shape in a strip quickly in such a way that you can make a hole. Now, I don't know, I guess I cut that out and didn't realize I did that because I might have introduced that into the, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Um, so here's me just cutting out the, the positives. And again, you can use those as well. So you save those, you never, you don't ever get rid of anything. Um, because if I need to re replicate this template, I'm gonna need one of those to transfer it back on a piece of plastic. Now, of course, the next time I do this, I might get a longer piece of plastic. I can do five or six in a row when I lay it down um, to draw them out. Um, but this worked out fine too. This, you know, this this worked out perfectly fine. So now I'm going to make the one for the platform, and I didn't need to make a bunch of them at once. So I just I said, all right, I'm just going to draw at least one. Um, and make sure that it's there's no and I'm not off the edge or anything like that. Of course, I'm off camera, but <laughs> but now you have to make sure that the shape. Now I'm getting smart now and saying, okay, I can do that, and maybe I can. I get I get, a, get another one on there. No, I can't get another one on there. No, the heck with that. I'm just going to do just one. Um, again, it's just found material. Um, I, I already had the folder. I think we used it to put business cards that we've designed in in the. Uh, in the folder itself, it was like a business card holder insert, and, and it had pockets, and we never used the pockets, so it's like you didn't ruin the item to create this material. You just, you know, kind of transferred a portion of it, and no one will know the wiser. So, here I am cutting out off camera. There you go, fix it, buddy. And now I'm just gonna fix that last part with the pencil, and I've now drawn it with pencil. If you need to make an adjustment, you can make an adjustment. If you need to clean up the edge, you can certainly clean up the edge. I think I might be making it larger because I realized that it didn't, still didn't look right. So here I am adjusting it before I cut the template. I'm making it a little bit bigger um, just to give myself some space because it's easier to cut off what you don't need than it is to try to put it back on. So I, even at this stage, after I made the template in paper, I made a change before I cut out the, the final shape of the negative. And again, you can, all the way through this process up until this point, you can continue to make these changes to your design and, and the production of your jig um, to make sure by the time you get to the foam, the good stuff that you know, you've paid a whole dollar for uh, is going to allow you to be able to have the shape you really want. So it looks like I'm attempting to be able to do two at once not sure that I really needed to because I only needed about four or five of these. Uh, but I guess I just wanted to be able to um, have a multiple thing because I did it on the other one as well. Um, just to see if I can minimize waste on the material that I'm about to cut. So when you do this, again, your shape is probably going to be something that you've come up with. Something that you've seen in nature. Something that you've seen in another person's channel. Something you've seen in... in in uh, graphics and art, maybe in one of the books. That would be cool to replicate something that you saw in one of the books. Um, but you certainly want to do whatever you can to um, make sure, again, at this point, you're now, I'm now double checking the final fitting and making sure everything covers. Um, and once I make sure that everything does cover, um, I would be going on the next step of actually starting to cut this out. And, and just to really make sure that we're all good and make sure everything works right uh, for what we're trying to do. So now I'm saving everything <laughs> so I don't lose it because I'm notoriously bad for just misplacing stuff and having it just kind of grow feet and walk off in some other direction. Um, and now I'm preparing to actually draw this down onto the board um, for the foam. And so here's, I started doing this one-to-one -one and I said, okay, I need to stop doing this one-to-one. And so now I'm actually getting smart and making this into a strip. And of course, I instantly realized that I cannot use anything I've drawn because it's now 
and introduced error and going in a bad angle and going off the foam board. So I start completely over on the other side, which is the benefit of not taking the paper off until you know for sure what you're doing. Um, because now I have a clean second side. I realize that there is a hanging chad on my template. I use the big black line underneath the curve to kind of try to get this right. And now I'm skipping ahead after I've drawn them on an entire sheet. And I've now, of course, sped up this project um, template segment. Um, so what I'm doing first is, again, I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm doing the long cuts first, about half of the sheet at one time, so I can have it close enough to me so I'm not overextending myself. Um, I didn't I clearly don't mind having that extra weird corner um, because uh, I can fix that later. And I'm saving all the pieces. I'm not getting rid of anything. I'm pretty certain I can use these in-betweens as my segments in between the steps to increase depth and to increase the height of the staircase as the rise and the run, which is the number of steps per linear scaled foot. And so I then, you know, take some time, put on, I think I was watching a football game at this point, um, and just put on something and just go to it. Nice and relaxing, gives you the ability to exercise replicated curved cuts with a blade. So you can kind of get practice on that. Um, this is great practice for that uh, because any errors you make are never going to be known to anybody at this point. And because you're doing this consistently, uh, as you get pretty good at it, you're, you're now creating nearly identical pieces hand cut. That's huge. That's the, the, the level of precision needed is not as great as the level of desire to simply be consistent because, and as you can see, this is definitely not on a straight line that way. And I looks like I drew over top of the other ones just so I didn't have to draw on the other side of the board. Um, and you can do that because you're just, you know, drawing and you're not actually cutting. Um, so I, I felt really good about the work I had done to prep for this part of this build um, because I knew that no matter how many I actually needed, which I wasn't sure how many I needed, but I knew that however many I needed, there was going to be plenty. And I did end up stopping. You got to learn where to stop. I ended up stopping adding uh, steps to my model at a point where I did still have um, a significant number left over um, in case I wanted to uh, add on to the set or build something different um, or at least just have a, a, a foam equivalent template, a positive template for the piece itself. So I, again, I can't stress enough how, how important it is to me to not have trash and I define trash as an entirely unusable piece of material uh, where there's nothing that can be done with it and it must be discarded so I hate that it, it's, I despise that you know every piece of plastic ever made in the history of the world is still here in some form or another and it's getting into our sea life and it's getting into our food and it's getting into our bodies and it's getting into our ecosystem in a way that is really almost at this point um, close to irreparable. So not contributing to that by not just tossing out things, uh, even in a small way, at least I know that what I can do myself as an individual being on this spinning blue ball, um, I'm doing what I can. So, uh, and now here, what I'm doing, this is the last part where I'm now taking those strips and I am now separating those strips out into the individual pieces and cleaning up the edges where I didn't get too close to the line. And that's it. And again, the pieces that are being cut off in between, I'm hanging on to those as well. You never know when you're going to need an extra little shiv here or a little section here that you need to either add back onto something or use as a shim or as a detail on a door or a, a detail on any other part of a building. So again, all of those pieces, because of the way that I laid out the template, laid out the drawn uh, transfer, 
uh, it gives me usable pieces to, I would say, at least 95 to 97% of this board will be able to be used in one way or another, even though a lot of these pieces, or almost all the pieces, are fairly intricately cut. So offcuts and the usability of offcuts to me is a, is a wonderful boon to your um, to your return on your money in. And again, you know, we're not talking about a lot of money for a piece of foam board, but it, it multiplies amongst all the things you might do with what you do. Um, I have things in my garage, offcuts of, of two by fours and wood from 15 years ago when I was building things seven houses ago. Um, and I still have those offcuts, offcuts because they're still usable pieces of wood. Um, I'm just of the mind that, that the more you can make an attempt to be a plus in your effect on the planet, the better off the planet will be, um, you know, you know, a carbon neutral footprint equivalent. Um, so again, here I am just cutting the pieces off, uh, just, just repetition. I got, I got a little Ikea, uh, bookshelf bin there on the ground. I just let the piece fall into there. So I've got them all collected. Uh, I think I throw the other little pieces in there, which I really should not have done because that would create such a mess. But um, that's what I do. So this part of the build, again, is more of that busy work. It's, it's kind of before that's kind of pre-assembly um, in that you have to have all of your, all of your construction materials uh, parsed out before you can really start the actual construction of whatever it is you're going to ultimately make. And although this takes some time, it's really worth production in this way. And if you're doing uh, dungeon tiles, or you're doing building panels, or you're doing uh, roof shingles, which terrifies me to have to do roof shingles, I haven't even tried that yet. Um, this part of your life is defined as meditative, therapeutic, factory work and and you, you just jump into that mode and you know that that's the amount of time you've dedicated to this part of what you're doing and it, it goes pretty well because you're really number one you're not dedicating your time only to this particular pursuit because you can again you can while you're watching a ball game or while you're listening to music and you're unwinding and you're detaching from social media and all the craziness in the world uh, this helps you kind of multiply uh, the factor of productivity in your time uh, without feeling like you're really grinding because this really isn't that bad it, again it gives you opportunity to practice these these intricate cuts with a blade it gives you the ability to know when to change a blade um, how to trim a piece up uh, all of those skills don't come naturally they they come with time uh, and practice makes permanent is the way that you would want to remember the value of doing this um, and at the same time you're creating construction material so now you're combining quite a few things at once um, and the w the best way you can multiply your time is to stack these activities that way and it'll make you a better more precise um, cutter It'll make you a, uh, a, a more precise estimator of usage and waste. It'll, it'll improve your workflow because by the time I got through this, I was just cranking these out pretty easily in, in, in such a way that it felt very natural to do these cuts. And so this is part of the evolution of what you do and the evolution of how you do it. So in this next step, we're going to actually start getting down to actually doing some true construction. So this is, we're getting close to where you can start seeing things kind of go from the ground up. So that's exciting. So I really hope you tune in to the next video. This is going to be a lot of fun.